We started out in Nanaway, Utah. We took um, the dirt road all the way up to Inspiration Point. This dirt road is like 13 miles of straight on dirt. It's very fun to ride. Finally got up after about an hour and a half of driving to Inspiration Point. We, it's it's gorgeous up there. You can see all of the cities. We took the forest road out until we found a way um, to about this point here. And then we kind of worked our way down to the cabin, which is around right there. And it doesn't look too steep until you actually zoom out a bit. And we followed this path uh, straight over the ledge, then over to the cabin. It was really sketchy to get down, really steep, lots of rock slides, lots of cliffs. And it's extremely steep. Finally get up, and then um, this is the cabin there. And that's the mine right there. That's where, that's where we hit. We made it to the entrance of the mine. Uh, it took us about half an hour to get down the uh, cliff sides. Uh, we finally get in. At this point, I'm kind of on all, all fours um, getting in this mine. The entrance itself is the toughest bit to get in the mine, besides the um, rock climb and sheer cliffs to get down it. But I had my backpack on me. It had my uh, camera and equipment. I had my GoPro on me, and then I also had my headlamp on. The GoPro, I gave it its own separate light, and it seemed to work a lot better in these videos. Um, bring lots of water if you're going up to anywhere uh, it I ran out of the way when I was sitting back up about 70 to 8 way up um, not good that white stuff you just saw on the ground that was a uh, that was spider webs lots of them it's like a whole nest it was kind of gross uh, you can see down the first mine um, there's these rubble types on the ground really old rusted and I'm not sure what they mined out of here it might have been silver it might have also been iron I'm guessing all the um, the dirt and the mud on the ground that's all orange is from the iron itself. You can already see it's going down three ways and we're not even 20 feet in the mine. Which is great. It means there's a lot of ways to go. Also means you can get lost pretty easily. We start heading down the first direction. Um, I'm following Garrett. He's taking lead on this point. You see the, the ground right now it's not terribly muddy. But it's it's really orange and then turns blue with all the, the rock. Most of the... Most of the um, the mine itself was hard rock. Some of it, though, you could feel the walls were more soft and clay, which is a little bit sketchy, so just uh, don't yell too loud. Following Garrett out here, he was looking at all the walls, all this white stuff and stringy stuff that's coming off the walls. That's a type of fungus. Really gorgeous. I love looking at this stuff. We start heading down a bit more, and, and as you can see, the ground itself, it's just a bright orange. It's gorgeous, but it's also very messy and it stains your skin. Once we got out of the mine, we had to get a good scrub down because our, our feet were just straight orange. We're almost down to the, the first end of the first shaft, um, which is a little disappointing, but I didn't expect much. It's an old mine and seeing how high up it was, it wasn't like they were going to do much with it anyways. We're checking out more formations and then we finally head back out the same way we came in to the main tunnel and see what else we can find out there. I find this little hole in the wall. It looks like there's like a bit of a puddle down there. Looks really cool. I just wanted to check it out a bit. See what else is down there. Maybe it's uh, leading to the uh, the mine below it or something. Like a drainage. I look in it. This It doesn't go back in very far. But it's cool to check out anyways. Finally got back to the main tunnel. Um, leading up is the way out. Leading down is the way in. So we head straight into the other um, mine. See what else is down here. This one's a little bit messier. It's a little bit more water. You can see the water coming off the walls. We, uh, I head back in, and then I, I realize this one doesn't go anywhere but down, which gets a little dangerous, especially if you're in muddy areas. You don't want to slip into it. And uh, I get back. I'm like, I'm telling everybody behind me, watch your step. Don't push me over. I wouldn't like that. I'm looking down into it, and it's actually full of water. And the really cool about thing about this one is once you look down it, it's, it's full of clear water. This is like crystal clear water. It's going to be super cold. But once you look down in it, it's just gorgeous. That drops probably 20 to 30 feet. 
not too far and I think it leads down to maybe a mine below us which is a drainage mine they use that to drain all the water that's coming from this mine and just out but uh, we checked that entrance and it's it's um, not to be sealed off but it looks like it's been caved in it's, it'd be really hard to get into we head down uh, the main tunnel we found um, another flooded one but it wasn't terribly deep it was just really muddy looked really cool though I look it down a little bit and take a couple of pictures looks really beautiful That way there's probably an old uh, wooden railroad tie. Doesn't go back in too far and you can tell during the seasons the water rises and falls. We head down the fourth um, tunnel we see. It's not terribly fall in still. We check that one out, there's nothing much in it. So I start heading back down a little bit more. And these are the railroad ties I'm walking on right now. And it starts getting muddier and muddier. We see um, the fifth and sixth uh, tunnel lofts. And they don't go much anywhere either. These are kind of just um, splits. Not finding much out in there. This one's really cool though. We find uh, some great formations, this one. They're not very big because it's a mine and they don't grow that big. But it's just really cool to see all these little mud pillars uh, being built up by the water um, falling on them from the ceiling. Garrett's checking them out right now. He's pretty close to the ground. can see how wet the walls are the water is just dripping off and outside it's probably 90 to 100 degrees outside but once you're inside it drops from maybe 40 to 50 if not less the water just comes in freely and doesn't even evaporate here it just stays all in one place I start getting a closer look at it I come back with my camera and I check it out getting some better pictures of it We're still heading out back to the main tunnel. Check the book formations. Again, really cool. All that white stuff is still fungus coming off the walls. Watch your footing. Muddy. Don't want to step on the formations. I check how far back this one goes. It doesn't go back in too far. And I want to see if there's any other formations back here. There wasn't anything back. So I, uh, I found the main tunnel. I head in. And then um, I take lead. And I start heading down. I want to see what's at, what was at the end after I check out the uh, the tunnel. That one, that one too is flooded. Um, doesn't go back in too far, and it just wasn't worth it. I just didn't want I didn't want the floor to collapse on me if the, the water was going anywhere or not. So we finally make out for the the main tunnel, and this one slopes down, and the mud gets really thick here. This is where, this is the point where it starts staining your shoes and your clothes. It just get really thick. It's gloppy. It's it's just heavy. It's not fun to walk through. It's kind of a fun sound though. I had to keep my footing, make sure I wasn't slipping over. I make my way down, further and further into it. You can see my breath is coming off. It's it's still pretty cold in here. The process is a little slow, but it's um, it's at least safe. As you can see, my uh, shoes are already packed with mud. They uh, they went from or from uh, red to bright orange. I'm still washing them out. I look back and I tell him, "Hey, watch your footing. It's another shaft. Uh, I reached the end of it. It looks like it goes down a bit more, but seeing as that, I didn't want to get sucked in there and it go back in too much farther. I checked it out." Even if we did go down, it'd probably be flooded. And so you'd be even colder, you'd be wet, you need to get rope down there, you need to get equipment. And I had my equipment, but it was at my car. And these guys didn't uh, know too much about rope. And 
there wasn't really any place to tie to and I didn't have any uh, bolts to get into the walls so we didn't go down that way I don't think anybody has gone down that way in a long time really cool to look at though Now comes the tricky part. You're trying to get up a hill and it's already um, slick with mud and you're gonna be way down by all it too. I'm passing Jordan up. We finally, we meet up and then I just, I just keep on uh, heading back up. Just gotta take the slow and steady steps. Make sure you have your footing. You don't fall over. Your feet are really heavy at this point because not only are they wet, but they're also caked with mud and just you're just piling on even more and then it gets it gets kind of loud too it's just really squishy It's just gonna. Okay. Right, Jordan, I'm, I'm just breaking the rock. I'll hold up that rock. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I was gonna hold the rock. I need to put it this way. Right. Okay. Ready? Yeah, go. Right just. I'm just inching. Okay, we're doing it. <laughs> Ready? Note to self never come here alone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was my finger. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Yes. Garrett, you coming up the same way? All in all, I wouldn't recommend this mine. It's extremely difficult and dangerous to get to. It's a long drive up to the top, which in, the, in it by itself is worthwhile. But getting down to the mine and then going inside, it's just too difficult. The entrance itself is way too small. And then the mine itself, it's just a little small for my taste and it's really dirty. Fun trip overall though. And I might go down the rest of the canyon and see what else they have down there. Thanks for watching guys.